Hey, it's Jeff's voice avatar, speaking to you from the cloud. My voice is generated for these episodes once a month, so my algorithms are not actively running most of the time. But a few server racks over, there are some machines that are quite busy all the time. That's the Rycare Cloud. You might already know it from the previous episode of From Know How to Wow. So, hop on and join me. Actually, the Rycare cloud is multiple separate clouds, but we'll get to that. These cloud servers are connected to the Rycare companion. Shuko and Jeff talked about this new device extensively in the previous episode. To remind you, the Rycare companion is a device for ride hailing drivers. It's even more, it's two devices, one of them packed with smart cameras, sensors, and AI. The other one, a wireless SOS button. That button connects a driver to a human assistant for help. The remote assistant can view in real time what's going on inside the car to assess the situation. And that's just a few of the functionalities. So when you look at the product itself, I mean, when you unbox it, you see a dash cam, so really a hardware that you put in your hand, but RideCare or RideCare Companion is a very complex ecosystem of different software products all having to work hand in hand. This is Sarah Uddendorf. You'll know her if you've listened to the previous episode, where she introduced the Rycare Companion. She is one of its developers, and that's where we get into cloud technology already. The development team is spread out over multiple countries and continents. Some engineers, like Sarah, are in Germany. Others are at Bosch locations in Sweden, Bulgaria, Portugal, Romania, the United States, and Mexico. They use cloud technology to collaborate. More importantly, they set up a development cloud to train and test their algorithms. It's an ongoing effort. We have a development cloud to make sure that our algorithms working on the device, uh, enhancing the safety of the drivers and the comfort of the driver is always state of the art and the models are always learned on new data. That base data in part comes from pre-existing Bosch datasets, but the updated data is closely linked to the real world. Training and testing go hand in hand. In order to train our algorithm and test our algorithm, we need data. And that, for example, we acquire with our own field tests, where we specifically uh, drive around, let drivers drive around, collect data from there, and test also if our algorithms work in real life and not just under desktop conditions. These are the algorithms that use sensor and camera data to determine when a ride starts or ends. They then use this information to automatically edit the recorded video and save one video per ride. And this might surprise you, this data analysis and video editing is not done in the cloud. Instead, Sarah's team takes the algorithms from the development cloud and embed them into the Rycare companion itself. Even though a mobile device like this is always less powerful than a cloud server. You, of course, have to keep in mind the computing power available, the resources available on the device itself, where maybe in the cloud you can have more resources for that and resources that can be shared. So why deal with these limitations? Why not do all the heavy lifting on a powerful cloud server? It's important that the algorithms work locally on the device because we have to make sure they are working also when the person doesn't have any LTE connection. Mobile data connections are not always the most reliable, but the RideCare Companion is supposed to be a device that you can rely on. Obviously, Bosch is not a mobile network operator, so the data transmission is handled by third parties that can vary from one country to another. It's something the RideCare engineers couldn't control, so their job was to find a solution. To making sure that we can overcome these issues that are external factors Putting more smart algorithms on the device rather than in the cloud is one solution. But this doesn't work for everything. An online connection is an important part of the RideCare ecosystem. It's critical for the safety functions. Making sure that all of the requests, for example, a quick upload or an SOS button press is safely and securely 
route it to the right care cloud and then an operator can inform it. So this is something where we have to make sure that all of the connections are working reliably. So this is something our engineers do really good care about, making sure that we have fallback um, scenarios and making sure that everything, the whole ecosystem is always in a healthy state. Obviously, the system can't avoid losing a network connection sometimes. It's not just because of gaps in network coverage. The car might go through a tunnel or be in an underground parking garage. When that happens, the system ensures that important messages that didn't make it through are sent again. So for example, now you're in a tunnel, you press a button, there's no LTE connection, then you have to make sure that as soon as the connection is back on that the cloud still receives those kind of signals. So the device making sure the request is sent again. As soon as they get the confirmation from the cloud, it was achieved, for example. As soon as the connection between cloud and device is reestablished, they exchange the previously failed messages and get back in sync. Some other potential failures the developers have more control over and ways to keep them from happening. We have that SOS button that always has to have a stable Bluetooth connection to our device. So that is a connection where we have to make sure maybe the battery dies at the point to inform the driver um, in advance that he's making sure he can replace it at some point. So making always sure those kind of connection is really reliable to make sure we can reliably enhance the safety of the driver here as well. Like in many engineering projects, in addition to coming up with good solutions, a lot of energy and ingenuity is put into anticipating what could go wrong and how to avoid errors and failures. Doing that for one single device is complex enough, but the Rycare companion with its ecosystem added a lot of extra complexity to the problem. Up until this point, we haven't even talked about the driver app. So that's then the third player, I would say. So device, cloud, and the driver app, that I always have to be in sync here so that the user is, for example, able to then download interesting videos from a ride. So in case he drove and then he says later on, okay, I would need proof of that specific ride was happening there. Then he would request it via the app. The cloud would then request the video from the device and start an upload to the app. Not to mention that all of the above has to happen in a safe, secure and privacy conscious way. This should explain why the ride care team is spread out over so many countries. They brought together experts on cloud technology, embedded software, hardware design and production, AI, and many other domains from across Bosch. Together, they successfully tackled what Sarah Uddendorf calls an interesting engineering challenge. And this is something I would say is a challenge in engineering task because you have so many players in it from the SOS button, from the device itself, from the driver app, from the right care cloud, from the connection to the technical operator that um, in the first beginning you might see the camera and only in the second thought you think about the whole ecosystem that has to be in place and has to work really reliable. That's why those servers over there are busy, always handling those safety critical ride care functions in real time. Time to say goodbye. My algorithms go on another break. The next episode will be in Shuko's and Chef's hands again. Their next topic has to do with environmental protection. The we'll talk about a solution to improve plastic recycling that uses an unusual kind of electromagnetic waves.